Still awake? <laughs> um, I, I, so uh, we, last time we were uh, uh, going through deriving the common filter. And uh, before that, we were looking at the um, nonlinear filter for a partially observed Markov chain. In one case, it was all the concept was Bayes rule. And here, the concept was that uh, when you have uh, Gaussian random variables, there's a very, very special structure. But once you know the mean and the covariance, the mean and the covariance, you know everything. <coughs> Plus one given means exact plus one given x t. Yeah, so x x hat of t was the same as x hat of t given t, which was the conditional mean. And that was what we decided would be the goal. And x hat of t plus one given t. There it is. So you can go on and, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I just don't, you know, there's no point. You go to Wikipedia and look it up. Um, the, uh, um, and and I, I remember I ran out of time. There was a bunch of matrix manipulations I needed to get the formula for sigma t. But it's just, I want to emphasize the concepts, not adding, subtracting matrices in front of you. So, um, so there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing a conceptual value that was left out this time. So write, writing down rows of matrix equations is a waste of time. That's very fun. You can go ahead and see, like, I mentioned the book by Anderson and Mori. Um, that's, um, um, that's, that's the best, uh, the best reference. Um, the, um, let's see. There is something here that we need. Right here. Um, in the end, if you put all this together, Look at y of t plus 1 minus y of t, minus y hat of t plus 1. Make sure I get the notation right. See x of t, right? Future, which I couldn't see. Um, so let's look at this deviation. Uh, what do we get? Um, and this is what I call the innovations. Um, let's see. So this is equal to um, c times x, and that's equal to. Yeah, that's right. 
Let me write down my goal first. I, I got distracted. The reason I got uh, trapped here for a second is that um, what I'd love to do is I'd like to look at the error of subtracting off this from this. I'd like to get some sort of insight as to if this thing will work. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to directly do this, you see I started to get stuck. And there's a good reason for that. Um, when you look at the error, it's mostly uh, naturally looked at in terms of, of the uh, one step ahead uh, estimate. It's most natural to look at uh, this rather than, I mean, this rather than this. And that's the way you'll often see the common filter. So let me step back for a second. Um, the, uh, so you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill all of this. relationship between these two guys. So, so looking at the error equation for this is going to tell, you know, tell me something about this. Um, so if you actually, if you did go to Wikipedia, you'd more likely see this representation. Type in Wikipedia, look at common filter discrete time. You'll often see that. And the common gain, you won't see a G, you'll see an L. And that's because of the fact that you're looking at the one step prediction rather than that. And now it's much easier to look at the error equations because for, the, for, the, um, for this one step ahead uh, of prediction, the y minus y hat, y minus y hat, let's write this down again. The difference here turns into a deviation that's much easier to see. Okay. So, um, if I look at um, x tilde of t plus 1 given t, which would be the difference between these two guys, <coughs> Let's do it in our heads. Um, we're going to get an A times the difference. And we're going to get, these guys will get killed off. And you'll get some noise here, and you'll get this deviation term here. And I'll just write it down. something, some sort of a, you know, hopefully stable filter. <laughs> so the question is, is this thing going to work? So there's some algebra here I'm not doing for you. So you can just go through and throw it together and shuffle around the, um, the equation written down. 
and you'll get this formula. And hopefully I didn't make a mistake of this differences. I don't think so. Because I've got, right there, I've got y minus y hat. Where'd it go? Yeah, I probably did leave out a term, didn't I? Did somebody tell me the mistake I made? I forgot to include the noise. So what, what have I left out at the LT times the noise? And um, it's actually this horrible notation that's been adopted in the community. <laughs> it goes forward. Yeah. Um, what? Oh, is it minus? Uh, no, what's it? It's L times the Y. And here, this is correct. But look at this minus this. Well, if I left it, well, no, you're right that I might have a sign error. Uh, yeah, because it's the Y that's introducing the noise. That's right. OK, so what do we hope? Well, we hope L doesn't blow up, because then I, I, I'm exaggerating the noise. So we hope this is L, the L occursion is stable in some sense. And we also hope it would be nice if L was constant. And then we can use all the tools from linear systems theory to understand this. Okay. So that's, that's what we'd like. And um, so it turns out that uh, that's what we'd like. So if we'd like convergence, it would be nice. It's sort of like what we had for the. Um, in optimal control, we had this feedback again. For the, for, the, for the fine horizon problem, we finally converged. And secondly, we'd love it if the eigenvalues of A minus LC are all strictly less than 1. <laughs> you know, so that the limiting fill, the air equations for the limiting system are stable. And so that better be true. And and yes, it's true under very, very, very similar conditions that we've seen before. So it turns out that, what do you need? What is it again? So it turns out that um, all you need is um, stable matrix in discrete time, which means it's Hurwitz, right? And uh, so I'm just saying that, yes, my goals are satisfied, but it's written down there, provided AC is detectable. And uh, what does that mean? Well, we actually came up once before, but it's really detectability, let me write down the simplest way.
one definition of detectability is that there's some L that will make this stable. more minimal condition than that. We want uh, A minus LC to be you know, a stable uh, uh, matrix, second value is less than one. To get that, all we need is it to be possible for some null. <laughs> and that's stabilizable. And that's detectability. Um, and uh, it's the same as equi equivalent to A transpose C transpose uh, being stabilizable. Between A transpose is a system matrix and C transpose is what we called B before. That being stabilizable is the same as detectability of A and C. You know? So there's this mysterious duality between estimation and control in linear systems theory, which is completely ununderstood in the nonlinear case. You know? It's something that uh, people worked on for years and years. It's just still an open field. Um, okay? So, so it works. Um, so you can plug this in and work. Now, Again, you can look all this up on Wikipedia. What you might not find is the following. One thing you would find is the following, is that if uh, the noise is just uncorrelated, Common filter is the best, the best filter among all linear filters. <laughs> so if you restrict yourself to, to, to using linear um, transfer functions as your state estimator, uh, then the best you can do is a common filter. So that's reassuring. So if you didn't have a Gaussian model, you know, Gaussian distributions, which you never will, um, at least you've got the best uh, among linear um, filters. So, and the, sta the stability is stability. It's going to be, you know, if the, if the disturbances are, you know, some crazy, have some crazy di uh, distribution, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's still a stable filter. That's not very exciting, but it's, it's reassuring. It gets more exciting. It gets more exciting. We, we'll, we'll get closer to the egrets in a moment. Um, 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 um. Here's more exciting. Exciting. What if we had a time variant system? If you want to put me to sleep? Just let's talk about that. But what's exciting is they can depend on the measurements. They can depend on everything. So they can be stochastic. So uh, you you allowed for, you allowed the um, um, for if um, if we expand the definition of y. So it's the expanded definition of observations to be um, yi, ai, bi, and c, i plus one, I guess. So the ai, bi, and ci are now random processes. Okay, and let's let's call this our observation. And let's assume that the noise is independent of this. So 
So assume all these assumptions before, that the system noise and the observation noise are Gaussian, IID, mutual independence, so all the Gaussian assumptions. Um, but assume moreover that, um, what, that, um, that uh, N of t plus one and uh, W of t plus one are independent of Y two. So that's that's you know a mild assumption really. Um, so if those hold, then the Kalman filter is still the optimal filter. It still gives you the conditional distribution. So that's a pretty fact. And anything else I want to say? There are other things I want to say, but forget it. And the proof is identical. You know, basically, there's no difference at all. Um, because uh, given these are your observations, it's just as if it's a deterministic system. You observe these things and you use the fact that we know that the conditional distribution of Gaussian is equivalent by induction. Can you explain for a second what, what that's, how that signal works? Oh, I'm sorry, it's just notation that. You know, if you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. It's just, it, um, but when I, I, I do say that, when I, I say that, um, when I say that, uh, um, so remember when I said U of T is in Y T, I mean, U is a function of all that, all that stuff. You know, of Y zero to T, A, A zero to T. So saying that U is, is one word is adapted to Y. So it's just a function of the observation. Okay. So these are my observations. That's all I'm saying. This is the notation that we're using for observations. You take a stochastic process course, you'll be inflicted with this notation every single day. All right. So it's just partially just teaching us the notation. But what I say, I want to be able to, given these observations, I want to get the best, the, you know, uh, estimate of, this, of the state. Well, it turns out the common filter gives you that example, just under this independence condition, you know, and of course the Gaussian condition. Nothing else, part one falls apart completely. You know, that's not true anymore. I have no idea. If I don't have a Gaussian model, I have no idea what to say. <laughs> you know? So under the Gaussianity assumptions, I still get the, the optimal uh, estimate. Okay? Right. So well, how, you know, why does that excite me and the other thing doesn't? You know? Well, it's just so you know, flexible. You know, here's an example. It's not the most exciting uh, example, but uh, let's just look at this case. This is a linear system. I have this, what's called a regression vector. You know, so it's a vector made of a past uh, outputs and past inputs. The meaning doesn't even matter. Phi of t is just some vector. I'll put a transpose there. Theta is just some vector I don't know. 
So it's just, it, it determines a transfer function for a linear system, and I don't know. Okay? So let's, let's see if we can apply this approach. What's, how could I, how could I apply this? There's no, in this example, there's no state. I've got to be a little bit creative if I'm going to apply this theorem because this is not a state space model. Are you with me? So how would I estimate the, that's what I'm trying to say. I've got this beautiful tool for estimating. It looks sort of like my linear model. If I flip that around, I can, can I think of phi as c? So let's take um, x of t to be theta and c of t to be phi of t transpose. And voila. Um, I, I've got the common filter because x of t plus 1 equals x of t and uh, y of t plus 1 equals c of t x of t plus noise. Apply the common filter. When you do this, you get least squares. <laughs> you know, that's all you get. <laughs> so the, the state estimator, which is the estimator, Theta is it's a slightly normalized. So you have to assume that theta that theta is zero is Gaussian. I mean theta, which is x of zero, excuse me, is Gaussian. Um, you know, if you throw that in, you get the common the common filter becomes least squares. So this is not said to get you all excited. It's just it's said, it just shows how incredibly flexible this is, and um, it really begs for experimentation to sort of play around. Um, take a problem, and you see something that you don't know. Pretend it's Gaussian, <laughs> and just you know pretend everything is Gaussian and, and try it out. You know. <laughs> There's no, uh, you know, why not? Um, the, uh, um, in this case, you get an optimal algorithm. Least squares is a beautiful algorithm. In, in general, there's no theory. We don't know if it's going to be stable. We know it's the optimal uh, conditional distribution, but it might be, a, you know, that, that optimal conditional distribution might not have pretty dynamics. So, um, all right. So I want to start at one more example of this. And which illustrates some really nice concepts that I obviously won't have much time. But uh, let me give you one more. Does this example illustrate the application of this approach and also um, some other things as well? work that was sort of solved by Lye and Robbins in 85, and Lye's still a genius at Stanford. It's absolutely amazing, amazing person. Um, and it's just a slot machine problem. And it's just, it's different than a normal slot machine because the slot machines are different, and some you could actually make some money, and others you can't, okay? Um, I'm gonna look at a really, really simple version of their problem. Much, much, much more simple than they ever considered. Um, but uh, here, here's the model. Okay, so physically I've got two slot machines. I can pull one or the other and make money. And here's one way to model it. Um, Oh, 
Okay, so I'm going to have a control input, which is a u, uh, and ui equals 1 means I'm going to pull arm number i. Uh, i can be one or two, 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 two possible arms. And uh, I can't pull two arms at once. <laughs> you know. and, and the integer is no partial pull. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see. And um, I'm going to uh, assume that, um, let's see. I'm going to assume my reward. So basically, there's going to be a, a constant of that reward, say ten dollars, uh, plus some variability around that. Okay. So the ar the arms are, are random. When I you know pull an arm, I could make. And, and of course, to apply the theory, W is going to be some Gaussian, which might be might mean you get negative a, a negative payment, and it could be negative infinity. <laughs> so you know, it's not exactly realistic, but uh, it's just, this is a way to construct algorithms. Um, so, uh, let's see, so this is it. And so, what do I want to do? I want to make as much money as I can. Okay. So, my goal That, that's, that's my goal. I want to, I want to um, maximize my total reward, or perhaps the mean. Get out your purple pen. So Lion Robbins actually looked at the sample path version. But let's just, if you look at the expectation, it's a little bit simpler because my, um, you know, before I pull the arm, I can't see the noise. You know? And so basically, uh, y, y of t is going to be x i, the unknown, plus d, uh, w of t, and those are going to be dependent. So if w is 0 mean, Expectation of u1 of t times w of t is going to be zero, so it's just going to disappear. Okay, so there you have it. So this looks a little bit simpler. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to maximize that. And how would you do it? So what what, what do we need to do? I want to do that. And so I've got my Kalman filter, so let's throw in some assumptions so I come with an estimator. Um, we have to think about that. It's basically the same thing as before. And then what would you do? 
I want to maximize my awards. How would I use this golden information to uh, maximize my award? <coughs> what would any CEO do? Yeah. And get a huge bonus for it. And especially after last semester, last semester, last lecture, I said that if you take the estimates from the Kalman filter, just plug them into your controller and you've done it. You know, I, I just said, hey, we nailed it. So what would any CEO then who's taken the last uh, lecture of this course do? <laughs> what? Yeah, so two is a two is a controller. Isn't it? Yeah, I think you might have said it. You should be a good CEO. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, so, so most would just uh, do what? I mean, yeah. Check each step quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just what you do is you buy stocks. You say, hey, this is worth a lot of money. I'll put all my money in that one. <laughs> Called, you know, this is this is exactly what we did in the linear case. We took our estimates and we pretended that they were a reality. You know, that this is the truth. So this, if you if you knew this was really x1 and that was really x2, that's what you do. You know, because you're trying to maximize this, trying to maximize our total reward. So clearly that's what you do. Or you'd opt out if they're both negative. <laughs> if x1, x2 are negative, you'd say, I'm going home. <laughs> um, uh, let's forget about that. Um, so that's called, this is what's called a separation principle for linear systems. Last time I called it the separation principle. I've got a control law based on knowledge of the full state, and I just plug in the estimates as if that's reality, and it's justified in the LQG setting. Okay, um, and it's called certain equivalence elsewhere, like an operation to search, and, uh, Markov decision theory, and so forth. Just taking the estimates pertaining to reality. And what I want to do is I'm going to easily go over. over. I, I want you to think about this uh, until Friday. Okay. Um, you know, I want you to make sure you're on the same page. So what I want to do next time is, is leisurely go through and solve this problem. Uh, and, um, and think about uh, how, if you get your bonus or not uh, as a CEO. <laughs> uh, so this, this, is, this is one approach. And the, the big thing is the question mark. So next lecture I'll go through and, and we'll, we'll do this. It's, a really, it's really pretty with a common filter. Case. It's just elegant. Uh, it's just, uh, Amazing how, how cool it is. And uh, so you, you've got this beautiful thing, what do you do with it? And you try this out and maybe until the crash. Um, but I, I'm just going to end early today. Uh, so I'll hang out there because several of you wanted to have questions about the project. So I'll, I'll just wait around for 10 minutes, okay? But this is too good to the rush, so I'm just going to wait until Friday.